I set the date to go through the temple to get my endowments. I told my family, told my visiting teachers, and so, you know, there were preparations to be done, so I had a really good friend in my ward help me, you know, prepare me to get ready, and I had an aunt that actually did go through with me, and, you know, some people from the ward were there. Um, most of my family wasn't there. My dad was waiting in the waiting room because he couldn't go. He was working towards being able to go back. Um, so he couldn't actually go through, you know, he couldn't be in the endowment session with me, but he was waiting in the waiting room. So I remember being very confused um, even before I got to the endowment session. Okay, so for any LDS friends or family watching this, I'm not going to go too much details because I know how sacred it is to you. Um, so from here on out, you may want to shut it off because it might be offensive and I don't want to be any more offensive than I already have been in the past. Like, anyway, <laughs> so, um, I remember going in to get my new name and I thought it would have been more like the experience I had when I got my patriarchal blessing or I felt like the temple would bring me closer to God because this is God's house. This is where I should feel the most close to him and um so when I went so there's a board and they put the name they write the name your new name the temple name and uh when I walked in my stomach dropped um because I saw there was a name up there that had been erased and then she wrote the same name and that's just not what I expected. Um, and in the part of the temple, before I even got to the endowment session, there was, I just felt bad. Like, I felt, I don't know if it was guilt. I, I went through my mind and I'm like, okay, I was as honest as I could be with, like, I didn't feel like I lied to my bishop. I didn't feel like I lied to my state president. I was upfront about everything. They said I was worthy. Um, they said I was worthy, so, you know, I was all set. So there was no reason why I should have this bad feeling. Um, but I remember the lady who was talking to me and another girl that was going through. And she was getting married. She was younger. And um, she's just, like, told me that I was, like glowing because I was just so happy to be there and this was like you know a dream come true um finally here and then I felt uncomfortable out of my comfort zone during the endowment session and just not what I expected at all <laughs> and I finally, after the session was done and I went through the veil and I was sitting in the room, you know, she's like, you can just sit there as long as you like, pray, meditate, well not meditate, but just sit there and relax and think if you want to and no big thing happened. Like I didn't, I mean, I guess I didn't really expect something huge to happen, but I just felt, all I could think about was how confused I felt. I still believed in it. I still felt like I had a, you know, strong testimony, of course. I just was kind of disappointed, and I was really confused, like, and I left with a headache, 
and you know my aunt and my dad telling me how proud they are of me and how how they love me and how my dad is going to get his recommend and then we can all go through together and when I left I'm like I don't want to do that again like I'm okay with doing initiatories I don't know why, but I was okay with doing initiatories, but I did not want to do another endowment session. Like, I'm just like, I don't even want to go back. And that's not how I should have felt. Um, so that was the starting point, I think, besides some, you know, besides the what, stuff I already had on my shelf. But I put it into the back of my mind. But I think that was the starting point where maybe my heart was open to seeing stuff. And at the time, I was also taking an institute class here in Logan, Utah. And because I moved back when we got married, when I got married, I, we moved back to Utah. I don't know if I said that earlier. So I've just been in Utah for the most part since then. And so 20 days after I went to through the temple, I met a friend that was Christian, and he came from the LDS religion. He used to be LDS, grew up, his family is LDS, and I would hang out with him at his house, and he would start telling me things about Joseph Smith that didn't feel right, and I'm like, I've never heard that. Like, and I felt like I was pretty knowledgeable. Like, I read the Book of Mormon. I, you know, and went, seminar went to seminary, loved seminary, you know, studied. And I went to institute, institute graduate, still took institute classes. So, I was active in the church most of my life. And he's just telling me things that I never really knew. So... So I'm like, I don't care. Like, I don't care. No matter what you tell me, I'm strong and I'm very happy in this place. And I don't care anything you have to say. You know, it just flew over my head. There came a point in time, you know, few months, several months, and he wouldn't stop. And sometimes I've really felt disrespected because some of the stuff that he would do, um, like, with, when I was there with his friends, like, um, I felt very disrespected because he, anyway, it doesn't matter. <laughs> um, but the things that he told me about Joseph Smith, and I'm, <sighs> there came a point where I did decide I cared, and I was open and ready to... Actually, the point in time came when I'm like, you know what, I'm getting, like, so I want to defend this. Like, what am I so scared of? This is true. I have a testimony, and he is making, you know, I just wanted to stand up for it. And so... I looked into it through church resources, the LDS church history, um, it was in his, his, the history, I looked through the Doctrine and Covenants and the verses in the Bible, anyway, um, I had no idea Joseph Smith practiced polyandry, um, the 14 year olds, the teenage girls weren't, it bother, bothered me, but it wasn't that big of a deal because I thought people back then, like I always was told that people back then just, you know, got married younger. So that was the excuse for that. That's why that one didn't bother me as much. But I did not know about polyandry. And that really bugged me a lot. I figured Joseph Smith practiced polygamy because God commanded him to. I... But it, the church is just so focused on Emma and Joseph. And that's pretty much what I was taught was Emma and Joseph. Emma and Joseph. And I love Joseph and Emma. Like, I got the letters that they sent to each other. 
um, there's a book about it, and, you know, I got that for Christmas one year, um, and I lost my train of thought, <laughs> so, um, but if I had known about the stone in the hat, I did not know that he did the treasure hunting, they if they did mention it in institute, they just skimmed over it. Like, maybe you guys need to check this out, read it on your own time. Um, can't really talk about it or go through it. If they did mention it, that's probably what they said. Um, so it really bugged me that, you know, because it's just everything. I didn't know that he drank wine um, in the gel before he died. I had no idea that he had a gun and he shot and killed I think it was two men and wounded another one um, which is fine I would want to fight back but when you're being taught I was taught that it w he was like a lamb being led to the slaughter like Jesus was and Jesus didn't f fight back um, he just let it happen. I mean, Joseph Smith fought back, and I wasn't taught that. And there's just a lot of things. Like, the more I looked into it and researched it, there's just, like, it never ended. It felt like it, there's one thing after another after another, and then stop looking at Joseph Smith, go to Brigham Young, and there's just all these other stuff. Um... I learned more about, I knew about the blacks and the priesthood, um, but I learned some other things and what the Book of Mormon used to say and what it says now, so I looked at the two. I bought one at Deseret Book, a copy of, you know, the Book of Mormon that was like the first edition, it was like a replica. So I compared it because I couldn't trust everything that was online, right? They had the copies online that you can go look at. And I'm like, okay, well, I need to fill it with my, you know, use, you know, I need the actual book to make sure. So <clears throat> there are just things that were, that I saw, that I researched, um, and I started to doubt. Um, it was scary. <laughs> it was very, very scary. Like, my world was shattering. And when I finally decided to make that decision to research, and when I started doubting, I didn't... I ended up praying. In fact, I ended up praying, um, I told him, um, of course he already knew, he already, you know, um, cause at this point, you know, I still believed in God and Jesus. So I prayed and I'm like, I am doubting and I am finding all these things out about Joseph Smith and the church and things and Freemasonry, and, um, the temple, the temple was a huge part of it, Joseph Smith was a huge part of it, um, the process of the Book of Mormon, the plates, just, you know, just every detail, the multiple accounts of the first vision, except that wasn't new, um, I knew about it, because they had mentioned it in Institute, that, and they even said, read them, because, you know, but I also heard that <laughs> they mesh together. It just makes it this beautiful thing. Um, but they don't really go together, in my opinion. So, I knew about the different accounts of the first vision. I just didn't know what they said. He said that we would go through them sometime in institute, in institute class, but we, we didn't. And... I was like, okay, well, I trust you, so I don't really need to go look through them. So I looked through those, and anyway, I 